Republican Senator James Risch of Idaho. He is a member of the Senate Foreign Affairs, Ethics, and Intelligence Committee. Senator Risch, thanks so much for being with us. John Poppy, thank you for having me. So the Senate Intelligence Committee is where the action will be. It's where it's already been in terms of investigating alleged contacts between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Also, perhaps the conversations that Michael Flynn had with the Russian ambassador. I suppose my question to you, sir, is would you like to see, would you like to see General Flynn come testify before your committee? And are you willing to subpoena him if he's unwilling? And what would you want to know from him? Well, uh, right now we're laying down exactly how the uh, investigation, the probe, the look into, whatever you call it, is going to take place. That's going to take the shape of, uh, obviously, document review. That's already underway. Uh, it's going to take uh, uh, the form of testimony before the committee, uh, and it's going to take uh, some interviews of uh, people. And it may very well include uh, getting General Flynn in. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. Uh, sometimes when these things happen, depending upon what the facts are, uh, you can invite them, but that doesn't mean they have to testify. And that happens more often than not when you, when you get bogged down in uh, this kind of, a, of an investigation. All right, let me get to some new reporting just in for our Jim Shuto and get your reaction to this. Um, the White House, Jim is reporting, is considering tapping Stephen Feinberg, a big investment uh, banker here in New York, to conduct an, a review, Senator, of all of the U.S intelligence agencies. This is according to officials with knowledge of the plan. A few things to note here. This would essentially take away that authority from the director of national intelligence. That's something that the White House denied uh, during, the, dur during the early days that they wanted to sort of revamp the DNI. This is someone who would come in, someone who sits on his economic advisory council, and he would oversee, do a full review of all of these intelligence agencies that the president has been so critical of. Is that a good idea? Well, you know, that's up to the president. Uh, this is new breaking news. Uh, I, I, as you told it to me, this is just what I've heard. But you and have the to New remember. York Times re reported it this morning. So overall, as a concept, I understand if you haven't read it all, but is it a good idea? Do, does the U.S. need this? Well, it's not a question of does the U.S. need this. It's a question of does the president feel he needs this. Remember, we have two branches of government. What you just described for me that this person is going to do is exactly what the uh, Senate uh, Select Committee on Intelligence does, and that is we do oversight on all of the 16 intelligence agencies. In addition to that, we also do oversight to see that they're doing their job. We also do oversight to see that they're not infringing on uh, U.S. Uh, citizen privacy concerns. So that's our bailiwick. That's what we do. So whatever he does, uh, uh, for the president, uh, that would be up to him. If the president feels that he needs to uh, have a look at this and have someone advise him as to what the first branch of uh, government is doing as far as the uh, committee operation is concerned, uh, that's certainly up to him. We cooperate very well with the, uh, mm -hmm. with the intelligence agencies. The question is, you know, you, you haven't, you know, we've all been out here the last month or two. We know there is what seems to some to be a, a, a bit of a feud right now between the intelligence community and the president. It well, happened right. before the inauguration. It may be ongoing right now. And again, your concern isn't just for the administration, but it's also for the intelligence services itself. Do you think this will send a chilling message to the rank and file? Uh, not necessarily, but uh, you know, the, the point that you brought up is an excellent point. Here's what's happened. Uh, when you change administrations, as we just did, there are dozens and dozens of people at the top level who actually have to leave the agency and new ones are brought in uh, under the new administration. Sometimes uh, there isn't good feeling when that happens, and I think a lot of this fallout is from that. Indeed, the New York Times article that broke all this stuff indicated that the information they got were from former uh, members of the intelligence community, which means they're people that mustered out uh, uh, when Trump came in, and uh, for whatever reason, they felt that uh, they should uh, leak things. Uh, the president is absolutely right that, uh, that leakage of classified information is a criminal act. Uh, and he's, he's right to be uh, unhappy about that. Uh, having said that, of course, that doesn't uh, uh, take care of the, the uh, predicate problem uh, regarding right. these conversations. So, so, Senator, to John's point, I want you to listen to what uh, Representative Steve King, a Republican of Iowa, said to our Allison Camerata just this morning, because it gets to the crux of the question, which is, you know, how, how far do you go here? Is there an intimidation is there fear of an intimidation of intelligence officials? Let's hear what Steve King had to say.
They have to find the people that are working against this administration, and they need to be purged from the intelligence community. His words, those people working against the administration need to be purged from the intelligence community. Do you agree with that? Well, I think they've already left. Uh, as I said, the articles themselves said these are former people that are, uh, that are talking about that. Look, the Intelligence Committee is made up of tens of thousands of hardworking, good Americans uh, who uh, put their lives on the line in many instances. Uh, these, these people are not the people that are involved in, in the political aspects of this. And uh, the people who did this, who formerly were with the agency, do a real disservice uh, to those who have remained behind and work in these agencies and do the necessary work that America needs uh, to gather intelligence. Uh, I have no doubt that the people uh, uh, that are in the agencies and have remained right. there are as frustrated and unhappy with the uh, lawbreakers who have uh, disclosed classified information. And, but just uh, to be clear, uh, yeah. Senator, just to be clear, because you, you, you called it a predicate problem. You, you, you still do think there are questions that need to be answered in terms of possible contacts between the Trump campaign and the Russians during the campaign and also further light shed on what General Flynn discussed with the Russians. And so I don't miscommunicate, don't get me wrong, the fact that uh, that was illegally leaked in no way uh, reduces the seriousness of uh, those concerns that all of us have, particularly, particularly those of us who aren't particularly uh, enamored with uh, Russia. Uh, those are serious concerns and they're going to be looked at. But as I said, there, there are other issues here, uh, not okay. the least of which is uh, law breaking. All right, uh, Senator, we, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks for coming on. And it's also great of him to respond to the breaking news. I mean, obviously Absolutely. he's hearing our report for the first time and we do appreciate his willingness to talk to us about it as it happens. It's a good point. Uh, and we're going to have much more of this breaking news, a big report out from our